Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowling of Bowling Small Engine and today on the table I have four cams. These cams are typically found with the exception of this one in OHV 28 to 33 cubic inch Briggs and Stratton Intec engines. The reason that I want to show these cams is to show you how these cams have evolved from the older 12.5 L head engines that were around for many many years very dependable very reliable to the more modern OHVs which you are plagued with with the lobes being wore down the compression releases breaking actual warpage in the cams because they're built so thin absolutely terrible but without further ado, I'm going to start off by showing you guys the 12.5, which was, as I said, an L-head model. And as you can see, it doesn't have a compression release. And I'll be honest, these cams were absolutely just wonderful. Uh, the only way that one of these would truly break or be faulty is if you throw it a rod. Okay, I mean, they were really that reliable and that dependable. Uh, very rare did you ever find one of these that were wore out. Um, and when I say that, I can say that with complete confidence. Um, I know a guy that rebuilt his engine three times with the uh, original cam. So, as I said, these cams were extremely dependable. They went from this style to this style when they started incorporating OHV into their engines okay why they added the compression release is quite simple the OHV engines had such a small valve clearance that was required as well as a higher compression that the starters couldn't actually turn the engines over so they had to devise some way to get the starter to actually turn the engine over. So they created this little compression release. And it worked very, very well. These cams too were pretty decent cams. I won't go as far as saying that they are as good as the older 12.5s, which didn't require a compression release, but still, due to the fact that they made an OHV engine, it was necessary. That is in order to keep the starters that they currently had. Now I will say this. Briggs could have actually invented a little better starter. Okay, uh, Why they didn't, I truly don't know. Um, it surprises me as much as it does every other small engine tech that I've talked to. But they just didn't. Now on to the more modern cams. This cam, which obviously has the compression release broke, went in a 31 cubic inch Intec that had an oil pump, which is pretty obvious if you look, you can see there's a little cutaway here that's used to uh, drive the oil pump. And other than the compression release, this cam is in fairly decent shape. But as I was saying, these cams suffer many problems. And this was one of the problems that I was trying to address in a prior video with the bow lash. So I thought this video would be a great opportunity to show off this cam so that my potential viewers can actually see what I meant by the cam lobes actually wearing down on these cams. If you look carefully, you'll see that this cam is highly similar to this cam, with the exception that this one didn't drive an oil pump. As a matter of fact, it's actually the same part. If 
if you look closely enough, you can see the numbers. All they really done was just cut a groove in it to drive the, the oil pump. But, if you look closely at this cam, compared to this cam, you're going to see that this cam has suffered some definite wear to the bottom lobe here. You can see that this bottom lobe is almost round. I'm going to turn it towards the camera so you guys can have a better look compared to this one. And this is just one of the examples that I was trying to show you guys in the prior video. That these newer cams, they're just not built the same as these older cams. And it's truly sad because the quality suffers dramatically with these newer cams compared to the older. Now I know there'll be a few of you tempted to say, well, couldn't you just use the older cams in the newer engines? And the truth is, no. Briggs and Stratton made sure of that. If you look carefully, you'll see there's a thickness difference in the older cam compared to the newer cam. And that truly sucks. For a while there, you actually could. Briggs caught on to that quick and made changes. Basically so that they can make the cams cheaper. I don't know, maybe they saved a few pennies to each cam. I have no idea. It's just truly sad to see the quality go from this, which was very strong, very reliable, very dependable, to this junky crap that will break. As you can clearly see, this is basically the same cam, with the exception, like I said, of the oil pump. The drive for the oil pump is on this one. Truly sad. But I wanted to show you guys that cam load. And like I said in the prior video, if a cam lobe is wore down this bad, no matter how much you fight your valve adjustments, you're not going to achieve proper valve adjustment. The reason being is, is because the lobe is so far worn away, it can't perform as intended. So I'll just put these side by side so you guys can have a good comparison here as to the lobes and I'll match them so you can see groove to groove that I'm not kidding here and here you can see a major significant difference in the cam lobes it's truly sad but that's the quality we have to look forward to anymore and it actually pains me to say that because I am a tremendous Briggs fan I simply love the Vanguard engines. In my opinion, they're by far probably the best that Briggs ever put out. Okay, But to see quality like this in these newer engines, it truly, it sickens me. It kills me every day to know that quality like this existed. And all we have to look forward to now is this cheap shit that gets thrown in the engines. Until next time, YouTube.